Hello students, today we will discuss about the thoracolumbar fascia. Now thoracolumbar fascia is also known as the lumbar fascia and this fascia is a feature of posterior abdominal wall. So when you will see this transverse section of your abdominal cavity, where you will find, you will find this here in this posterior area which where you have the paravertebral muscles. So let's discuss in detail. So the lumbar fascia or the thoracolumbar fascia is a fascia which enclose the deep muscles of the back. That means if you are having the thoracolumbar fascia word in your mind, that means you are not talking about anterior wall, you are talking about posterior abdominal wall. Now this fascia is made up of three layer. What are the name? Anterior, middle and posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia. The posterior layer is the thickest and anterior layer is the thinnest. Now in this section, if you will see where are these three different fascia, layers of the fascia. So here you can see first in this section, you have to identify two muscle. This is your swas major muscle and next to the swas major, you are having the muscle is quadratus lumborum muscle. Now when you will see the fascia, the fascia is having three layer. So this fascia which is just next to your swas muscle. Now swas muscle is also covered by one fascia but this is known as swas fascia. Next to this the border on, of the swas fascia you are having continuity and this is your anterior layer of your thoracolumbar fascia. Now where is the another fascia? Now this is your middle layer of fascia. Now this middle layer is behind the quadratus lumborum and you will have the posterior layer. Now this is the posterior layer. Now this posterior layer is enclosing the erector spiny or you can say that it lies on the posterior side of this erector spiny. Clear? So there are three layer anterior to the quadratus lumborum is anterior layer posterior to the quadratus lumborum is middle layer and posterior to your erector spiny is posterior layer. But there is a one complete compartment and this complete compartment contains the muscle is known as quadratus lumborum. So what is the extent of thoracolumbar fascia? Now here you can see the extent. Now in this image, you can see from the anterior side after removing the whole organs of your abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity, you can see that posteriorly there is a posterior abdominal muscle. This is your swas muscle and next to the swas you can see the muscle. This is your quadratus lumborum. Now this quadratus lumborum you can see is covered by a white membrane. Now this white membrane is your anterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia and as I have already told you, this muscle is covered by the two layer anterior and you have one more layer behind but it is not posterior, it is middle layer. Now this layer which you can see here, now here you can see a big white color structure here. Now this area which is behind the rib is extending posteriorly till, till the your sacrum. And this big extension is known as posterior most layer. So posterior most layer is elongated layer. So the posterior layer covers the loin and it continues upward into the upper part of posterior side of your thorax as well as in neck. So you will realize that your posterior layer extend even in the neck in cervical region while the middle and anterior layer are confined only to the lumbar region. So when we are talking about the thoracolumbar fascia, the word thoraco comes because of the extension in the thorax of posterior layer. While the anterior and middle layer confined to the lumbar portion and when you will join both, you will have thoracolumbar fascia. So anterior layer, what is this? Anterior layer is thin. As we all know that it covers the anterior surface of your quadratus lumborum, but it is strong. Now the second thing is that it is thickened between the transverse process of L1 and the tip of your 12th rib and that modification is known as lateral arcuate ligament. So here in this image, 
you can see that where is the lateral arcuate ligament. So this yellow color is your lateral arcuate ligament and this ligament is extending from the tip of your transverse process. So if I will draw the transverse process, from the transverse process, if you will draw the extension till the tip of your 12th rib, you will find a arch and below the arch, you can see this muscle is quadratus lumborum. But you have to appreciate that muscle is covered by a very smooth white layer, transparent layer. Now this layer which is covering the muscle is your anterior layer and this anterior layer below attached to the iliac crest and above as soon as it will approach here it will attach to the L1 to 12th rib into and its upper margin will form lateral arcuate ligament. So this ligament give origin to the some fibers of the diaphragm. The subcostal nerve and vessels come out below this and you know that the subcostal nerve is in the relation of your posterior surface of kidney. Now what is the attachment of anterior layer? Whenever you are writing the short note on thoracolumbar fascia, most of the students are having problem, sir, how to write in exam. So my dear friend, the first point which you have to write in exam is what is thoracolumbar fascia? What are the layers of thoracolumbar fascia? What is the extension? Now we have to write all the three layer in separate part. Anterior layer, middle layer and posterior layer. So anterior layer you have to write down the most important word is that anterior layer in upper part is going to form the lateral arcuate ligament. Now what are the attachment of anterior layer? So when you will see the anterior layer attachment you have to uh, 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 learn two section. One is your transfer section and one is your vertical orientation. So when you will see the transfer section of abdomen you will realize its medial and lateral attachment. So in this image, if you will see the transverse section, where is the quadratus lumborum? You have to just keep one thing in mind. If you are having the question on thoracolumbar fascia, you always have only one muscle in mind is quadratus lumborum. So in this image, this is your quadratus lumborum muscle. Now this quadratus lumborum is covered by the two layer one is anterior layer and one is the posterior layer. Clear? What is this? This muscle is your swas major and what is this covering is swas fascia. Clear? So this is not the thoracolumbar fascia. Thoracolumbar fascia is the covering of your quadratus lumborum. Clear? So what is the medial attachment? Now when you will see the medial attachment of anterior layer, now, now we have to remove the posterior layer. Now we will purely talk about anterior layer. Now this anterior layer is going on the transverse process of your vertebrae. Now you have to understand that this is not attached on the tip, tip is here. It is attached on the anterior surface. Now this is because it is attached on the anterior surface you will realize that this anterior surface is having a groove here or you can say ridge. Now this ridge providing the medial attachment of anterior layer. Now this ridge is important because medial to the ridge you are having the swas muscle, lateral to the ridge you are having the, this quadratus lumborum muscle. So this is something is important to understand that medially the vertical ridge is there. Now where you will find the vertical ridge? Answer is, it is present on the anterior surface of the transverse process. And here you can see this ridge and this ridge is dividing the attachment of the swas muscle and attachment of quadratus lumborum. Laterally, now when you will see the laterally, this anterior part of your fascia will merge with the middle layer of the fascia. Or you can say the fascia which is covering the posterior aspect of quadratus lumborum, but it is not posterior layer, it is the middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia. So when you will approach this lateral point, at this lateral point what will happen that the anterior layer and the middle layer will merge and form the this end, clear? So it blends with the middle layer at the lateral border of quadratus lumborum. So this is in this transverse section, 
now you are able to understand the medial and lateral attachment medially it is attached on the anterior surface of the transverse process not on the tip and this anterior surface contains a ridge which is divide the attachment of your swath muscle and attachment of your quadratus lumborum now when you see the vertical orientation you will have superior and inferior attachment of anterior layer again you have to understand that anterior layer is anterior to the quadratus lumborum and you have to keep this thing in mind that quadratus lumborum attached to the 12th rib so your anterior layer is anterior to the upper part of quadratus lumborum between tip of l1 to the tip of 12th rib where you have the formation of lateral arcuate ligament so superiorly what will happen with the anterior layer that it is going to form lateral arcuate ligament which you can here appreciate that this is your lateral arcuate ligament which is a modification of the anterior covering or anterior layer what is the inferior attachment now below you will have the bone is known as hip bone so it will merge with the periosteum of your iliac crest and along with the ilio lumbar ligament so inferiorly it attached to the inner lip of the iliac crest and ilio lumbar ligament now what about middle layer now middle layer passes medially between the erector spinae muscle and quadratus lumborum now this line is something important that again when you will see the transverse section of the abdomen this is the posterior side this is your transverse section here you will have the anterior abdomen wall now this posterior part is having the three major muscle here which you can see this is your erector spinae this is your swath major and this is your quadratus lumborum now we have already talked about this layer which is the anterior layer now where is the middle layer now middle layer is actually present here now this middle layer is separating the two muscles this is erector spinae and this is quadratus lumborum clear and this posterior layer attached on the tip while the anterior layer is not attached on the tip anterior layer attached on the vertical ridge which is present on anterior surface so tip will provide attachment to the middle layer not anterior layer so what is the attachment so medially medially the middle layer attached to the tip of your lumbar transverse process and intertransverse ligament clear so my dear students you have to keep this thing in mind that this tip is responsible for the middle layer and when you will have the vertebrae one above you are having a connection between the transverse processes which are known as intertransverse ligament then what is the lateral attachment of your middle layer so when you will see the lateral attachment it is same as the lateral attachment of the anterior layer that means both the layer is having the fusion at the lateral border of quadratus lumborum muscle now what is the superior and inferior attachment of this middle layer now you have to understand that i am saying again and again that middle layer lies behind the quadratus lumborum so superiorly it will uh, go along with your muscle and it merge with the only 12th rib clear again you have to understand that this fascia is known as thoraco lumbar fascia so my dear friends the thoraco word comes because of posterior layer but the anterior and middle layer present only in lumbar region so you have to understand that in upper part you have to keep 12th rib in mind in lower part you have to keep iliac crest so between the iliac crest and 12th rib you have to draw three layer from anterior to posterior anterior layer of your thoraco lumbar fascia quadratus lumborum muscle and post middle layer of thoraco lumbar fascia not posterior layer clear so these three things are between the iliac crest and 12th rib so the superiorly it is attached to the 12th rib and inferiorly it is attached to the iliac crest clear 
so there should be no confusion that what is the attachment of anterior and middle layer so if you have the origin and insertion of quadratus lumborum in your mind you can very well understand the attachment of anterior layer and middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia now we left with the posterior layer so before that if you will see this vertical orientation on the posterior side you can appreciate that where is the iliac crest so this is the iliac crest and where is the 12th rib now this is the 12th rib now this is the posterior view you can see the spines of your vertebral column and you can now appreciate that this is the again the covering and this covering is present along with the posterior surface of the muscle but it is not posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia though it is covering the posterior surface of the muscle it is known as middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia because posterior layer is posterior most that will come here which we will see in this image now here you can see in this image now this image is showing the arrangement on the posterior side now if you will see the posterior side if you are checking my back you will find a extension now this thick fascia is going even into the neck and that's why this is known as thoracolumbar fascia so the word thoracolumbar comes because of its posterior layer not from anterior layer and middle layer but when you will see the anterior and middle layer you will find few important features what that the these fascia you have seen that the anterior layer and your middle layer join at the lateral end of quadratus lumborum now from this lateral end you are having the origin of transversus abdominis and internal oblique so this is transversus abdominis muscle this is internal oblique muscle but there is a one more important thing is that inner side you are having the fascia transversalis now this fascia transversalis is also continue with the thoracolumbar fascia posteriorly so the fascia transversalis merge with the anterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia clear so this you have to understand by, because when you are reading the anterior abdominal wall the word comes is origin of transverse abdominis and internal oblique from the thoracolumbar fascia so in this image if you will see my this left side you can see that there has to be a margin of your from the 12th rib to the iliac crest now this margin is the lateral border of your thoracolumbar fascia but when you will see anterior to this you will find the origin of the muscle and this muscle is known as transversus abdominis clear so this is what you have to keep in mind now the second thing is what is the extension of thoracolumbar fascia posterior layer so as i already told you that posterior layer is responsible to give the name thoraco and this extends superiorly even into the thoracic and cervical region and inferiorly it starts from the sacral region now it fills the bony interval between the vertebral spine and transverse process now you have to understand with that whenever we are having such kind of the transverse section of abdominal cavity where is the gap is present so this gap is between the vertebral spine and transverse process so where is the spine now this is the spine now where is the transverse process now this is the transverse process now this gap is filled by a muscle is known as erector spinae so this gap which is filled by the erector spinae is ultimately further filled by the muscle or by this fascia is known as thoracolumbar fascia so this lies behind the erector spinae now this is again the important thing that when you are dissecting from the posterior side you have to remove the superficial structure like skin but when you will go deep you will find first the thick fascia and that is your posterior layer of thoraco lumbar fascia and when you will remove this thoraco lumbar fascia then you will find muscle just x next to the fascia and that muscle is erector spinae that means this fascia lies behind the erector spinae and it blend with the erector spinae muscle now what is the attachment so 
you have to understand that because it is present in the thoracic region, lumbar region and sacral region. So you have to keep this thing in mind. First, what is the attachment in thoracic region, then in lumbar region and lower most sacral region. So when we will talk about the thoracic region, the fascia form a thin transparent lamina. So it is not very thick in the posterior upper part in the interscapular area. So when you will see the posterior side, you can find that when you are doing the dissection, this fascia is covered by the muscles which are present on the posterior side. Now this side we have removed the muscle, this side you are having the muscle, this is the trapezius, below the trapezius you will find rhomboidus major and minor. So first you have to cut the trapezius, then you have to cut the rhomboidus major and minor muscle. Now below that, on this side you can see you will find this white color layer. Now this white color layer is your posterior layer. Now when I will cut this posterior layer, deep to that I will find these fibers and these fibers are of the fibers of erector spiny. So what is the attachment medially? So medially it is attached to the spines of your thoracic vertebra. So these are the spines of your thoracic vertebra which are providing medial attachment to the fascia. Now what is the lateral attachment? Now laterally this fascia attaches to this part. Now what is this part? This part is your rib. Now which part of the rib? Answer is angles of the ribs. An answer is angles of the rib. So in thoracic region, medially it is attached to the spines of the thoracic vertebra. Laterally it is attached to the angles of the rib and it lies deep to the muscles of the back like trapezius, rhomboidus major, minor. Now what is the attachment in the lumbar region? Now when you will see in the lumbar region, you will find that this fascia medially attached to the lumbar part of the tip of lumbar vertebra. So in midline, either in upper part or in middle part or in lower part, you will find that medially it is attached to your spines of vertebral column. Now what is the lateral attachment? Now you have seen that laterally it blends with the middle layer at the lateral border of erector spiny. Now you have to understand this lateral attachment. Why lateral? You have to understand. Because when you are talking up to the rib, up to the 12th rib, now up to the 12th rib, this lateral border is attaching with the angle of your ribs. But what below the 12th rib? Now below the 12th rib, you are not having any bone in this area. Now once you are not having any bone in this area, now what will happen that posterior layer merge with the middle layer. That means now at this point, you are having the fusion of your anterior layer with middle layer and middle layer is merging and getting the posterior layer, clear? But it is not in the whole length, it is only between this area below the 12th rib and iliac crest. Otherwise, the posterior layer is attaching to the angle of rib till 12th rib, clear? But below the 12th rib up to the iliac crest, this posterior layer merge with the middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia. So this part or this line is become difficult to understand. So you have to keep this thing in mind that below the 12th rib because there is no bone in the lateral side, so the fascia will go with middle layer only. Now what is the superior attachment? Now superiorly there is no attachment actually, it will continue with the thoracic part of your fascia. Now what is the inferior? Inferiorly it will continue with the your sacral part of the fascia which will go and merge with the periosteum of your iliac crest. So when you will see the posterior layer particularly in the lumbar region. I am not talking about in the thoracic region. Why not in the thoracic region? Because it is easy to understand that in thoracic region, laterally it will attach to the rib. But when I will take the section in this lumbar region, which is here again, you can see that this posterior layer is going to merge with the middle layer. And this is the middle layer. So this middle layer is getting the posterior layer also. So this is what you have to understand. And this is the question which you have in exam. So in lumbar region, the posterior layer merge with the middle layer. But in thoracic region, the posterior layer attached on the angle of 
ribs. Now, what about the sacral region of thoracolumbar fascia? So, sacral region, when you will see posteriorly, it is stretched from sacral spine to the ilium. So, where is the sacral spine? So, you will have the sacral spines in the midline here and this is the ilium. So, the fascia will stretch between these two bony areas and it fuses with the periosteum. So, this is the something too important that if somebody will ask you that which part of the thoracolumbar fascia is thickest, so answer is posterior layer, but which part of the posterior layer particularly thoracic lumbar or sacral, answer is sacral is most thick part and it merged with the periosteum of the posterior surface of the sacrum and coccyx and inferiorly to attachment of the erector spiny on the posterior one fourth of the outer lip. That means when you will see the erector spiny, this erector spiny muscle which is present here deep to this fascia is attached here on the hip bone and along with the attachment of the muscle, the fascia also merge with the periosteum here of the hip bone and it covers the posterior part of the muscle, clear? So here in this video, if you will see, you have to first find out that this is your quadratus lumborum and when you will rotate this posteriorly, you will find that quadratus lumborum is covered from both the side by this membrane and this membrane is having lower attachment on the iliac crest. This is the upper attachment on the 12th rib. This is the posterior layer of your quadratus uh, this your fascia. Now this thoracolumbar fascia is going downward and this is your attachment on the posterior side. Now when you will again see from the anterior aspect, you have to understand this is your anterior covering of quadratus lumborum which is known as anterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia and it is modifying here to form your lateral arcuate ligament. So now at the end of this session, there are few important concepts. First is what is thoracolumbar fascia? So it is a fascia present in the posterior abdominal wall to cover the muscles of the posterior wall and the back. What are the layers? There are three layer, anterior, middle and posterior layer. The anterior layer and the middle layer are strictly present in the lumbar region, but the posterior layer is responsible for its thoracolumbar name. That means it extends into the thoracic region and it will go down up to the sacrum. Then you have to keep this thing in mind that the posterior layer is merged with the angle of ribs posteriorly and below the 12th rib, the posterior layer merged with the middle layer. And anterior and middle layer merge laterally on the lateral border of quadratus lumborum and at this point of the merging, they will continue as a fascia transverse salis as well as they will give origin to the uh, muscles of anterior abdominal wall. So now, you are having the concept of your thoracolumbar fascia and its orientation. So this is all for this class. Thank you.